today we're installing the new Wyvern Link VTX in one of our FPV drones. So if you're interested in that, this is the video for you. So let's begin. Okay, so we have our Wyvern Link VTX right here. This is the new Wave 2 version right here. And I did a first look on this VTX. I'll leave it linked above and below so you can take a look at it if you're interested in the more specifics of this VTX. We said that we have our test bed here for this VTX. And today we'll be using the SpeedyD Mario 5. It's a capable freestyle drone. This one here is the dead cut version. And I've also used this drone here in the past for the other open IPC VTX. I'll leave that video linked above so you can take a look as well. Now besides that this drone here was equipped with DJI 03 and then later on 04. But as you can see right here, there's no more VTX in here. It's completely stripped out. There's no camera in the front and no VTX in the back. So this thing here is pretty much ready for a new VTX. So without further ado, let's get this thing here started. And the first thing I wanna do here is just get access to the actual space here for the VTX. I've already removed the screws for this top plate right here. And you can see the foundation here that we are working with. This is a pretty cool standard kind of five inch drone. Usually you have the camera in the front, a pretty big old stack in the middle here. And the back here you have adequate space here for whatever VTX that you want, analog, DJI, whatever you want can fit back here. So this is pretty much the perfect platform for this test or install today. So the first thing I also wanna do when I install my equipment is do a little test run and see what kind of issues we're faced with here. Let's try to mock fit this VTX right here. This thing is pretty stout with this heat sink and the fan on here. It's a little bit bigger than the original version but uh, we'll see. We also have some pretty cool mounting holes on the here as well, 20 by 20 and 25 by 25. So let's see if this is gonna fit. This is gonna be my biggest concern is just the space here. As you can see, it is super tight, like very, very tight. Like <laughs> that's tighter than I would expect, but it looks like it might fit. It's gonna be really, really hard once we add the accessories like the antennas and then all the wires here for the UARTs. Having said that, let's just measure this so that in case you're doing this on your own, you can see if this can fit on your drone or not. Now, let's see here. We have a little tape right here. And it looks like to be somewhere around 46 or 47 millimeters. Take a look at it here with the calipers. This should be a better idea here. All right, as far as this is concerned from outside to outside, it looks like 48 millimeters. And then the width, which shouldn't be much of a problem. 33 millimeters here for the weight and then the height, which is, can also be a problem because this one here is very, very tall. 22 to 23, so 22 and a half millimeters right here as far as the height. Now that is a little bit bigger than most VTX guys and every drone here is different, but I think we can make it fit. So let's put this back in here and see if these screws can line up. So these screw holes here isn't gonna line up with my drone here, the Mario 5. So I'll have to find another way to mount this. I'll probably use some double side tape to do that. That's gonna be the cleanest option. Now besides the next thing I have to worry about is the antennas, which shouldn't be much problem. I can get them routed through the rear of the drone right here. Now this has an MMCX, which is not the smallest connection available. Sometimes you wanna see like a UFL connector that seems to be the smallest. So my goal here is to put this right in here and route this MIPI cable most likely around the flight controller. Sometimes you can do it above and top. I don't have any issues doing it that way as well. Now the next thing here is connection the UART on here. This did come with a plug here for this VTX, but unfortunately on the opposite end of that actual cable, it was just some wires that was exposed. So there wasn't really a plug to go into your digital plug here. And most modern flight controllers do have a plug here for the VTX. And I did want to use that for simplicity reasons, but due to the space concern or space constraints, I, I just can't do it with this drone here. So as you can see right here, we have a little bit of some wires right here. And I did this off camera guys, uh, just to save on time. So I did have to hardwire it to the actual flight controller. It's just for cables, guys. Power, which this one has a specific pad for it for a digital VTX. It does say nine volts, which is fine. And then we have the ground and then TX and RX. And obviously guys, you put RX to TX and TX to RX. So uh, just remember that when you install that on your drone. I'm gonna plug this in here. All right. And wire management is gonna be super crucial here today. 
so it can fit guys that looks okay but we still don't have the antennas connected yet let's put that on there and that should click in place there it is and then we're gonna put the second one in here all right that clicks into place now here's the challenge can this work this should be fun that's tight oh gosh that's tight my concern now is that this might affect the flight controller we'll see i'm just taking a look at it i think that's what we're gonna do since i have it out here guys i'm just gonna put the double side tape on the back here listen like this is not ideal guys only because i want to securely mount this to the actual drone but this double side tape should do the trick maybe cable is not binding anything Ooh. yo that's tight i'm gonna move it as far back as possible and it's secure with the double side tape it's not moving I'm just gonna wrap this MIPI cable here around this side door here. All right, that's through. MIPI cable is in the front here, adequate space. All right, so I'm gonna try to clean this up a bit here. We're gonna fish this through right here. And I have my TPU mount. I printed this out last night. And we're just gonna fish this through here. One, all right. All right, just gotta make this a little bit neater. You have your washers and your nuts on here. Washer on here first. All right, and then you just put the nut on here and that should hold everything in place. So that's cool. Do this side. Sweet, and we're just gonna tighten it up. All right, not bad. The VTX is in there. It looks clean. I mean, as far as I can see, it's connected. So that looks pretty good. All right, let's deal with the camera now. All right, MIPI cable. Here's the camera right here. This is a 19 mil camera. Let's see if I can get this correct the first time. All right, MIPI cable is installed. Now, my actual drone has the inserts for these cameras. So let's just put this in here. Put the camera in there. Take a look at that. That looks amazing. Camera's in, MIPI cable is connected to the front. Let me give you guys a quick look at it. You can see how that looks. That looks pretty clean, guys. Is it tight? Yeah, it's tight for sure. All right, let's put this cover back on here, this top plate, and see if it all fits. So we'll do a few. Nice. You know what, man? I probably should have powered this on before I put the top plate on. That's it. That looks good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Let's put the antennas on here finally. Oh, yeah. It screws on. There we go. Sweet. <laughs> Take a look at this, guys. Antennas in there. It looks clean. Is it going to work? That, I don't know. Is it going to work? Well... Only one way to find out, time is here. I'm not afraid that it's not gonna work. I think I did solder the positive and negative correctly. What I don't know it per se is the actual UARTs. Are they in the right order? Let's put this in right here. All right, moment of truth is right here, guys. I'm a little nervous, I can't lie to you. Props should be off, but hey, we are not uh, arming the drone or anything. All right, let's see if this works. Here it is, fans on. All right, that was just the beeper. It might work again this time. All right, yeah, that's just the beeper. So it worked, it fired up, guys. Um, I was a little nervous about it, but it fired up. Whew, that was nerve wracking, guys. That worked, that worked. All right, now that we have all this stuff on here, let's just wait to see how this thing here weighs with all this weight on here. All right, 497.4 grams, 497. So not too bad. I mean, this thing does weigh a little bit. So here it is, my Mario 5 with the Wyvern Lake, the Wave 2. This is the 800 milliwatt. VTX, 
and I'm eager to see how this thing here flies, guys. So next video here, we're gonna power this up, take a look at our VRX, put this on our goggles and see how the image looks, guys. Take this for a flight. And then I'll let you know my impressions of this Wyvern Link VTX, guys. Let me know what you think about this whole setup here. It's not impossible to install. I think the biggest challenge here for anyone trying to do this for themselves is just the space constraints. You saw the dimensions as I put this in here. It's a little bit bigger than I want to. I couldn't even use the actual mountain holes on this specific drone. But besides that, it's very, very clean. Uh, but it is a little bit longer and a little bit taller, the height wise, than most VTX in the market. So just consider your deck height on your actual drone before you buy it, or make sure you have a drone that's probably compatible space wise for this VTX. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.